Hey there, guys. Uh, today, uh, I'm not. Is this not going to really be a rant? Uh, it might sound kind of like a rant at some point, but it's not going to be a rant. Um, it's really me just giving my opinion on the Dragon Ball Super manga and uh, how a lot of people say they dislike the manga and for for a number of reasons they say they dislike it. And that's fine. They're, that's their opinion. I'm not making this video to try to, you know, um, call pe anybody out, any YouTubers out, anything like that. I mean, I'm not even a big YouTuber or anything. So it doesn't, that's not my goal. My goal is just to, you know, uh, give my opinion and maybe give people a look at the manga in a different way. Uh, it's, I'm not going to go into too many details about like everything that makes the manga so great. I mean, it's okay. It's not as bad as what everybody's trying to make it out the scene. Uh, one of the biggest problems I have with the manga is that people are saying that there's things in it that doesn't make sense or anything like that. I mean, in Dragon Ball Super, the anime, there's plenty of things that don't make sense and it's never explained. And I feel like in the manga, Toriel Taro tries to actually explain them. Now, I'm not going to say he does a good job explaining them, but he's in the, at least he's making an attempt to. Super, the anime, just does not try to explain a lot of things that goes on in in the show. And nobody says anything about it, or they do, but this this is what I really think. I think that um, the manga gets a bad rap because the manga comes out once a month. It doesn't come out every week like most other mangas. It comes out once a month. So when Super was running, we saw a lot of the stuff that the manga was going to cover, but in a different way, more than likely. So I feel like a lot of people, they'll look at it and they'll be like, okay, we, you know, you have to get over some of the problems you might have with the anime. And then when the manga finally comes out and catch up to those points where it was a controversy or it might not have been that good or you just didn't like it then you have to digest that again and try to get over it, but you just got over what the anime just did. Uh, so it's like it's a victim of coming second, where the, the manga usually comes first and then the anime. So I think that it, that's a big problem with the manga is that it comes second, and then once people get over the, the anime problems, then they got to get over the manga problems, and that creates another problem. So that makes people dislike the manga. And... I mean, would you really want to read something that is exactly the same? Now, a lot of people say that Toriel Taro is just creating and making changes just to make changes so that people will want to read the manga. I don't necessarily think that's the case. Um, I think if, like, if I was writing Dragon Ball Super, you have to think, would I do those things exactly the same way? Tori, I mean, Toriyama is actually just giving out an outline, right? And or like some kind of summary, something that they have to follow and they fill in the blanks. So if you get out of two different people or a team of people and then another team of people, those two teams are probably going to come up with two separate things or two separate ways of doing or telling that story. And that's what I believe is happening with the manga and the anime or that what did happen with the anime when it was running and what's happening with the manga now. He tells it in his way, the way he thinks it would be best told. Um, and, and, you know, um, uh, I looked at a video by totally, it's totally not Mark. And, uh, I mean, there was no problem with his video. I actually agreed with a lot of stuff he said in this video. I think it was a really good video. So if you ever get time, check out totally not Mark's uh, video on the Dragon Ball Super manga. And uh, it was a really good video. But I think one of his and one of his points was that uh, there was too many panels in one page, which I, I agree. There is a lot of panels in one page of Toyo Taro's manga, Dragon Ball Super. Um, but I don't think that's the number one problem. I think that he puts a lot of panels into his pages because it only comes out once a month. Whereas if it came out maybe every week or every two weeks, he might put less. I think that he wants to give a lot of detail into the manga just so people understand where, it, like, what's going on. Like, I think he's trying to explain it, but in a very quick way. Like in in Super, 
in the tournament power, like I've seen this a lot recently where people say that, oh, the uh, the manga was okay up until the, like the, the tournament of power arc. Like it was okay with the Trunks arc and Battle of Gods and the Universe 6 tournament. It skipped Frieza. Everybody was okay with a lot of stuff. Like it had some problems, but it was okay. And then it got to tournament power and that's where all the problems come in. Mainly, I think it's mainly because, uh, you know, the Master Roshi thing, which at first I did have a problem with. Now that I really go back and look at it, not so much a problem, but there's still some explaining that needs to be done. But I like I like Goku learning it from Master Roshi doing some special or, you know, some kind of martial arts technique or that he was training to learn or whatever that's similar to ultra instinct than the spirit bomb thing like the spirit bomb thing never made sense to me it, it i've looked at so many videos i've tried to do research on it it just never made any sense to me why goku would learn would get ultra instinct from the spirit bomb like i get the whole power in his body up and giving him energy back but he should just kind of came back as normal goku not ultra instinct i get it supposed to be breaking his his limits or his barrier but i just don't really like it um i just like goku doing stuff kind of like in an idiot way because that's how he's always done it i think that was Tor that's what Tori Otaro was going for when he did when he did the um that that manga panel or you know that, those pages for that chapter but another another problem i've seen um like geek the 101 he he said that he didn't like that kill was going on this rampage in the manga and was just throwing everybody out and he should just and she should just be killing everybody since she can't control her power but if you look at a very similar thing happened and the anime adaptation of it and i mean kill didn't knock anybody out so it was like that whole thing was just a waste of time it was just her going on a rampage doing a lot of stuff she powered through a, a super saiyan blue goku's kamehameha like it was nothing and and, you know, nobody really was all that upset about that. They just liked the references to Broly and everything. But, I mean, I had a problem with that. I was like, shouldn't she be throwing somebody out? Shouldn't she be knocking people out and stuff? But, no, but you know, people had time to digest that and get over it. So, when it comes to the manga, you get the same problem. But, it's a bigger problem because people already have this thing of not liking the manga. So, I didn't think that that was a big problem. I think I thought that made more sense that Kel would be knocking people out. And, and the anime was just so that they could make Jiren look better. Like, you know, just to knock people out. Because, I mean, people was like, oh, the tournament of power is going by so fast. But I remember when uh, the episodes was coming out for the anime, people were saying that the, anim that the tournament was going so slow. That uh, nobody wanted to see any of these characters like Ribbian and stuff. And... The manga, they're getting rid of a lot of those characters that nobody wants to see. So, to me, that's, there's no problem there. You know, there's there's not really any problem with knocking these characters that doesn't have any real background story. No, no meaning to the story at all. Just get rid of them. Just like they did with Krillin and Tien and Master Roshi, ultimately. Like, they got rid of those characters fairly quickly because they didn't do anything with the story. And... To me, that makes a lot more sense than keeping characters like that around. That's not going to do anything. Like the Tien episode, Tien is one of my favorite characters in Dragon Ball. Ever, ever since he first came into the show, he's always been a character I like. And Super, he's never he hasn't done anything in Super, but they give him episodes. Even when his recruiting episode came up, he didn't do anything. He just tried to do a tri beam the entire time. He didn't throw a punch. It, 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 he got beat up by Master Roshi. I mean, it just didn't make any sense to me. Why would Tien, who trains all the time, I mean, he shouldn't be as strong as Goku, but Krillin did a better showing than Tien did, even though it's always been shown that Tien had more talent than Krillin. So, to me, in the manga, they just skipped all that, which is perfectly fine to me. They skipped that part, and, you know, they just eliminated two characters at around the same time because they didn't do anything like in terms of power Krillin did nothing he did nothing in terms of power Tien did r absolutely nothing in terms of power sure they got the eliminations they got I think maybe two or three eliminations but do we really need to see it it's a waste of time and the anime it makes sense because you have run time and you want to fill that out 
But in the manga, it shouldn't. You shouldn't show that if it doesn't do anything for the story. So I think, I think little things like that actually show you how much the manga kind of does things a little bit better. If you ask me, like I said, these are all my opinions. You know, everybody else have their own opinions, but this is my opinion on on in the manga. And I, I mean, I just I just wanted to make this video just just so I can give you a different perspective on 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 the manga not because everybody trashes the manga so much like the that tracing thing it's not tracing it's referencing i'm not an apologist for the manga but if you look at anything there's always going to be some point at some t in some time where things seem very similar to something else it might not be intended but if you see something that's cool you might be like oh I want to take that and kind of use it and make it my own. And that, that happens a lot. I mean, sure, uh, with the Captain America thing and stuff, it was very similar. But, I mean, it was a cool pose. I, I don't see a real problem with it. It's not like he just took complete story elements and just ripped it right from the page and put it right there. You know, there's, to me, you could call it homaging the old works, you know. I just don't see it a big problem in it. But these are all my opinions. Let me know what your guys' opinion is on the Dragon Ball Super manga. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Um, let me know in the comments below. Uh, you know, uh, Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you later with another video.